Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I am Sydney. Today we are going to talk about selling on Poshmark versus selling on Instagram. Both platforms are amazing platforms that you can make money and that you can use to grow and expand and market your reselling business. So I'm going to talk to you today uh, about some pros and cons of selling on each and how you can use both platforms to reach as many people as possible and start making sales every day. Before we get into the video, uh, I definitely wanna hear from you guys. Let me know what platforms you are selling on. Also let me know if you guys are interested in Instagram and YouTube and social media platforms. Uh, if you ever have something that you would like for me to do a video on or a question that you would like for me to do a video on, definitely leave them down in the comments below. I love hearing from you guys I love hearing your comments and you know getting feedback from you on what you want to learn about and that really helps me decide on my video topics so if you want to hear more about social media definitely leave me a comment down below uh, that will greatly give me feedback in terms of what videos I continue to make in the future let's get into the video the first thing I want to talk about uh, in terms of Poshmark versus Instagram is your audience so obviously when you start selling on Poshmark, you automatically have an audience. Even if you don't have any followers, you have an audience because Poshmark has what we like to call organic traffic. There are already people on Poshmark. I think the numbers are there are 50 million users on Poshmark and 7 million of those are actual sellers. So you have 50 million people already registered on Poshmark shopping for things looking for your items to sell they are on poshmark to shop whereas on instagram instagram is a social media platform it was made initially to be visually focused to kind of like an online photo album if you will so people are not necessarily on instagram to buy things but that doesn't mean that they won't buy things from instagram so on Poshmark, you have people who are there with the intention of shopping. So they are already on there searching for items. Versus on Instagram, you sort of have to build your audience. You have to be consistent with your posting. You have to start posting things that will attract people in. You have to build trust with people on Instagram because they have no idea who you are. Um, and that is true to a sense on Poshmark, but people are a little more trusting on Poshmark just because in order to sell things on Poshmark, it actually goes through Poshmark and you're protected by Poshmark. Whereas on Instagram, you are selling things directly to people. So when you're selling things directly to people on Instagram, you have to build your audience and you have to build that trust with your audience and you have to build a sense of consistency where people will continue to shop with you and they will come back and shop with you. Uh, you want to be posting new arrivals consistently. You want to be posting interesting things that people want to buy that is going to draw people in and it's going to build your audience for your Instagram. Also, if you are interested in selling on Instagram, definitely pick up my selling on Instagram course down below. It already has several training videos in it to teach you kind of the ropes of selling on Instagram. And then I'm gonna be adding a new training video for it next week. So definitely check that out. We're also going to be doing a live Instagram training. So you won't wanna miss that. I will link it down in the description box and in the comments. The next thing I want to talk about is fees. So on Poshmark, Poshmark does take a 20% commission fee, but they do not charge you anything to list on Poshmark. So listing everything on Poshmark is completely free. They do not take this commission fee until it sells. And I know 20% kind of sounds like a, a lot, like a big number, but it's really not when you consider how much Poshmark does for you as a seller in terms of handling the customer service and providing you shipping labels and, you know, providing you this platform to sell on and handling, you know, they protect the sellers as well as the buyers. So you have that protection and that is what you are paying for in this 20% commission fee. 
Now on Instagram, when you sell something on Instagram, you are selling it to a person directly. So you are collecting the payment yourself via a payment processor. And you can use payment processors like PayPal. Uh, I really like Square. I've been using Square for over a year now and it has been fantastic. I still use PayPal sometimes, uh, but Square is just really great. It connects to your bank account and you can transfer funds immediately and it's just been awesome. Uh, but you are using a payment processor and you are taking those payments directly from people. So, you know, there's not that middleman that uh, you kind of have to go through if you were selling on Poshmark. Um, but in terms of, you know, accepting payments directly, like you are going to have to actually take the time and invoice people and make sure that they pay you and then you know you are in charge of that you are in charge of keeping track of that you are in charge of um you know keeping track of that in terms of your bookkeeping as well you have to keep up with how much you are selling on instagram whereas on poshmark you can go and you can run your sales report and it's all right there for you so that is something to kind of think about when you're selling on instagram you have to um just keep track of all of the sales that you are making manually whether that's in a spreadsheet or quickbooks or whatever you're using next i want to talk about shipping so this is something else that is part of the commission fee that you are paying on poshmark whenever you sell something on poshmark poshmark automatically generates that shipping label for you and emails it to you automatically so and it's a priority shipping label you can use the priority shipping supplies from the post office to ship your items with and this is a huge deal a huge contract that poshmark has worked out with the u.s postal service to provide you this convenient of hassle-free shipping if you will you know if you are selling something on ebay you have to handle the shipping yourself and that's kind of the same with instagram uh, if you sell something on instagram you are responsible for shipping that item and you can generate shipping labels through paypal and that gives you a discount on the shipping when you use paypal to discount your shipping label but you have to you know ship that item yourself there's no one sending you a shipping label there's none of that you have to get a scale you have to weigh it you have to ship it you know you have to get your own packaging if you're shipping it first class you have to figure out if it's first class or priority priority is anything that weighs over a pound so anything that weighs less than a pound you can ship first class with tracking uh, but you do need a scale i have one linked in the description box down below all of the products that i use for my business are linked in the description box and in the comments for you guys i get a ton of questions about different things that i use so they're always linked in the description and in the comments uh so shipping on poshmark is you know a convenient thing um shipping on instagram is not as convenient but it's not difficult uh, once you get a scale and you learn how to generate shipping labels in PayPal, um, you can Google PayPal ship now and there should be uh, a website that comes up with the link that takes you um, to generate shipping labels or you can go into PayPal and I believe it is under tools and you can choose like there's a whole page of things and one of them says bulk shipping. So you can click on that and it lets you generate shipping labels through PayPal. Next, I want to talk about payments, and I kind of touched on this earlier, but in terms of taking payments from people, when someone buys something from you on Poshmark, Poshmark takes that payment. So they are paying all the payment processing fees, and they are holding that money for you in your Poshmark account until the buyer receives the item and accepts it. So then you then have the option to transfer the money to your bank account or to spend it on Poshmark. Um, a little bit of a downside to this is there is kind of a delay in getting your money. Uh, you have to wait until the customer receives the item and either accepts the item or the three days expire for the money to be deposited into your Poshmark account. And then you then have to wait for, you know, whenever you direct deposit the money to your bank account. Uh, that can sometimes take you know, one to four business days, usually depending on what day you transfer the money. Um, so I usually try to transfer money Monday through Thursday because if I transfer it after Thursday, sometimes it doesn't deposit until the next Tuesday. 
so that is something to kind of keep in mind when you're selling on Poshmark and taking payments on Poshmark there is a delay in getting your money versus when you are selling on PayPal and you are collecting payments through PayPal um, or you know whatever payment processor you are using a lot of these payment processors now have the option to where you can uh, instantly deposit the money into your bank account uh, it hooks to your debit card and then you just transfer the money it charges you a small fee uh, usually I think with PayPal it's 10% I'm, I'm not really sure on that I think it's 10% um, up to $10 depending on how much money you're transferring at once um, something I also learned about PayPal if you want if you need to get cash from your PayPal account like if you're going to a yard sale or something and you're sourcing and you need to get cash from your PayPal instead of transferring it to your bank you can actually go to Walmart and go to their money center and you can withdraw cash from your PayPal account I think it charges like two or three dollars um, but if you need to get cash from your PayPal account to go sourcing or whatever you need it for uh, that is an option option to get cash from your PayPal account directly without having to uh, transfer it to your bank and then withdraw it. So I also want to talk about some other factors um, of selling on Instagram versus selling on Poshmark. Uh, you have to think about the type of inventory that you are selling. On Poshmark you can pretty much sell anything that's fashion related or unused makeup or home decor um, and you know you can list anything you want in your Poshmark closet. On Instagram, you kind of need to be a little bit more mindful of what you are listing. Usually people are going to follow Instagram shops who specialize in something, who have a niche, uh, vintage, Lily Pulitzer, um, you know, designer things. If you have a niche of a certain type of thing that you sell and that you have a lot of, I highly recommend, um, you know, niching down and using that for your instagram because people you know, if you're kind of posting random things people don't really know what to follow you for versus if you're posting one type of item and people are looking for this one type of item they are going to follow you a lot faster if you are better known for this one type of item like people want vintage stuff so if you post vintage stuff on your instagram account people are going to follow you for your vintage stuff and then so that means you you, you want to post vintage stuff you don't want to post a vintage thing and then a modern thing and then a home decor like stick to one thing and that is going to help you to build your following a lot faster on Instagram next thing I want to talk about is policies so Poshmark obviously already has their policies set in place and their policies are very good in terms of being seller friendly so uh, they do not accept returns for buyers remorse or anything due to fit and then if somebody uh, opens a case against you on Poshmark uh, Poshmark handles that whether they you know let them return it or reimburse them whatever they decide to do Poshmark handles that for you and it's a huge convenience that you know you just kind of state your evidence in your case and then Poshmark deals with it uh, versus you know if there's a problem and you are taking payments directly from people on Instagram you kind of have to handle that yourself uh, and you have to set your Instagram shop policies it's usually best to post those on your profile and have them very visible to people and then you know also post them as you're posting items just to kind of remind people you know if you don't accept returns or anything like that just have that listed clearly on your profile because you want people to know your policies before they shop with you just to kind of avoid any issues down the road so i hope this helped you uh, in terms of kind of understanding poshmark versus instagram instagram is a great way to not only sell things to people but also to promote your business so even if you are selling things on instagram you can still put that link to your poshmark closet and you know drive people over to poshmark and you can connect your instagram to poshmark which will drive people from poshmark to your instagram so you know just keep these things in mind and kind of weigh your pros and cons but don't ever limit yourself to one platform expand onto as many platforms as you can if you don't have an instagram i strongly encourage you to create one especially if you are trying to have an online business it is a free marketing tool and it basically puts your business in front of everybody because 
everybody is on Instagram and everybody's on their phones and it's just a great way to get yourself in front of people. It's completely free marketing. Okay, so that's my video for today. Uh, thank you guys so much for being here and so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.